Aave has over $20 billion in value secured in their smart contracts. So when you hear the word DeFi, they're the biggest lending project. No longer do you need to use a bank to take out a loan. You can do it easily through Aave. All you need is some collateral. So in this video, I'm going to cover everything from the basics of decentralized finance or DeFi to exactly what Aave is and how it works. Plus, we'll take a look at some of the tokenomics of the Aave token. By the end, you'll have a complete understanding of what Aave is and how huge it can be in the future of finance. First things first, DeFi or decentralized finance is all about taking those core financial services that we're used to like lending, borrowing, and earning interest and running them on decentralized blockchain networks. Big banks no longer have complete control over everything financial. Instead, you can transact directly with anyone around the world with a smart contract replacing the middlemen. And the best part, it's all transparent. Because DeFi eliminates third parties. You keep full control over your assets and decisions. So you can repay or expand the lending or loan at any time. That's the basics of DeFi. Now let's talk about Aave. The word Aave actually means ghost in Finnish, which fits perfectly well if you think about how it works behind the scenes. There's no central authority watching over everything. Aave is one of the DeFi blue chips and for good reason. It's made an incredible name for itself in DeFi. As of December, 2024, the protocol's total value locked or TVL soared to around $22 billion, which is huge. This growth isn't just about the raw numbers, it's about how Aave keeps innovating. Features like flash loans let you borrow funds instantly and repay them within the same transaction. There's also multi-chain support to give access to anyone who wants it. Remember, with DeFi, everything is verifiable. You can see exactly how much liquidity is available, where it's coming from, and how it's being used. That's a huge contrast to the traditional financial system where everything is hidden behind layers of bureaucracy. So let's explore Aave in more detail. At its core, Aave is a decentralized protocol that gives you the power to lend and borrow cryptocurrencies, all without going through a traditional bank. It runs mainly on Ethereum and has exposure to other blockchains as well. It uses smart contracts to automate the transactions and keep them transparent. If you want to lend, you can deposit your crypto into Aave's liquidity pools and earn interest on your deposits. On the other hand, if you need funds, you can borrow against the collateral that you've already deposited so you don't have to sell your existing assets to free up cash. Sometimes this can be a tax-free way to use gains from your crypto investments, but obviously that all depends on where your own tax liabilities are. Anyway, permissionless access is a key part of what makes Aave unique. Anyone with a crypto wallet can get started. There are no credit checks or piles of paperwork involved. This is decentralization in action. You have complete control over your own assets at all times. Aave also supports a wide range of tokens from Ethereum and stable coins like USDC and DAI to many other cryptocurrencies, giving users plenty of options. And at the moment, if you deposit your USDC, you'd earn around 7% a year. Another benefit to using Aave is its efficiency. If you're a lender, you can earn passive income by simply depositing your cryptocurrency. If you're a borrower, you can tap into liquidity quickly without parting ways with your holdings. When you deposit your assets into Aave, you'll receive what are known as A tokens, such as AF for Ethereum deposits, which accumulate interest over time. These are known as liquid tokens, and you can also sell these for the value they're worth. It should be noted though that the liquidity pools for these tokens tend to be a lot more volatile because they are smaller. Borrowers on Aave must provide collateral based on a loan to value ratio or LTV. This determines how much you can borrow. For instance, if the LTV is 75%, that means you borrow up to $750 if you put up $1,000 in collateral. Now you can adjust how much you want to borrow depending on your risk tolerance. Just be careful if you try any of this because it is complex and you definitely need to understand the risks first. If the value of your collateral dips below a certain threshold, 
part of it can be liquidated to ensure the protocol remains solvent. Borrowers can also choose between variable interest rates, which fluctuates with market conditions, or fixed rates for a bit more stability. All right, now let's take a quick trip back in time to see how Aave came to be the platform that we know it is today. It all started in 2017 when Stani Kulichov founded a project called Ethlend. Back then, the decentralized lending scene was virtually non-existent and Ethlend set out to solve that problem by directly matching borrowers and lenders. It was a peer-to-peer -peer system that gave people an alternative to traditional loans, but it definitely wasn't gonna be easy. First off, manually matching lenders and borrowers was inefficient and didn't scale well as more people tried to use the platform. There was also a liquidity issue. If you needed a loan, you had to wait for an individual lender willing to fund you, which sometimes meant slim pickings or high interest rates. And if you are new to crypto, the interface and complexities of the peer-to-peer -peer model often felt overwhelming. Even today, we still face that issue slightly, but it's definitely getting much better. By 2018, it became clear that Ethland had to evolve to meet the needs of the growing DeFi community. That's when the platform was rebranded as Aave. Now the name, as I mentioned earlier, is Finnish for ghost. And that really captures the vision of becoming a kind of transparent backbone for decentralized finance. It wasn't just a superficial name change, it was reflective of the overall change happening with the platform itself. Instead of directly matching individuals, Aave moved to a liquidity pool model. Depositors would place their assets into large shared pools and borrowers could then access those pools whenever they needed liquidity. This solved a big chunk of the scalability and liquidity issues because you no longer had to rely on finding a single lender who was willing to fund your loan. Automation through smart contracts also sped everything up, making the system more efficient and secure. Now from there, Aave hit some major milestones. In 2020, they launched Aave V1, which introduced core lending and borrowing functionalities in a more streamlined, user-friendly package. And that same year, the platform reached $1 billion in total value locked. It was a clear signal that this was something the DeFi community had been waiting for. Over the following years, Aave introduced flash loans, multi-chain support, and even cross-chain features. Each innovation pushed the boundaries of what decentralized lending could look like. Aave's vision remains focused on creating a decentralized, inclusive financial system where anyone, anywhere, can access the tools they need to manage and grow their assets. By focusing on transparency, scalability, and cutting edge technology, Aave continues to redefine what we expect from financial services in the crypto space. So that's the story of how Ethlend evolved into Aave, a journey marked by big ideas, real world challenges, and a whole lot of innovation. Now that we've explored Aave's origins and the basics of lending and borrowing, let's take a look at some of the more complicated features of Aave and how they work. One of the standout features Aave pioneered is the concept of flash loans. These are uncollateralized loans that have to be repaid within a single blockchain transaction. If you don't repay it instantly, meaning in the same block, the loan simply reverts as if it never happened. This makes flash loans an incredibly powerful tool for arbitrage, refinancing, or swapping collateral on the fly, all without requiring any upfront capital. But this is not for the average user. It's quite complicated from a technical and financial perspective. But anyway, what's under the hood for all of these functions are the liquidity pools. They aggregate assets supplied by lenders so that borrowers can tap into them whenever needed. And if a particular asset is in high demand, its interest rate will rise to incentivize more lenders to deposit that asset and vice versa. It's a real supply and demand based protocol. At the heart of it all are the smart contracts. They govern every transaction securely and transparently and ensure nobody can access it unless there's an exploit, of course, but these contracts are audited to minimize vulnerabilities and include built-in liquidation mechanisms to protect the protocol's solvency. So that means there should never be a repeat like the centralized finance platforms like Celsius, BlockFi, or anything similar as all the assets are there for everyone to see. That's the beauty of DeFi and decentralized platforms. It's also worth it to note that because there's no centralized authority standing between you and these financial services, 
Aave is able to cut down on the overhead costs and streamline the entire process. Now, Aave doesn't just limit itself to Ethereum either. It's expanded to other networks such as Polygon, Avalanche, Arbitrum, and more recently, the Aave V3 token has taken things a step further with cross-chain functionality, making the platform more accessible and cost-effective. As of late 2024, Aave supports over 30 different cryptocurrencies for lending and borrowing, handling billions of dollars in transactions on a daily basis. Now, the sheer size and scope of its smart contract ecosystem underline the trust that users place in Aave's model. So now that we've covered Aave's mechanics and standout features, let's talk about the backbone of the entire ecosystem the Aave token. This native token serves dual purposes as both a governance tool and a utility token, underpinning the protocol's operations and aligning the incentives of its community. The Aave token grants holders the power to vote on key protocol decisions from adding new assets, to shifting risk parameters. Now, because Aave is governed by the people who use it, owning Aave token essentially gives you a seat at the table where critical updates like moving from V2 to V3, are discussed and decided. On the utility side, Aave is scarce with a maximum supply of 16 million tokens. A significant chunk of these tokens is in circulation, but it has mechanisms to help maintain scarcity and potentially boost its value over time. For example, with the new tokenomics, the protocol will use part of its revenue to buy back tokens and redistribute them to the people staking. Aave holders can also stake their tokens in the safety module, which acts like an insurance reserve for the protocol. So if something goes wrong, say a liquidation failure, staked tokens can be used to cover losses. In return for taking on this risk, stakers earn passive income that typically ranges between 6 and 8% annually, offering an enticing reward for those willing to really directly secure that network. Beyond the safety module, Aave tokens also come in handy for borrowers looking to reduce their fees. If you use Aave token itself as collateral, you can get discounted borrowing rates on some things, which is a nice perk for those of you who want to keep your costs down. But one of the most pivotal aspects of Aave is its governance role. Aave token holders aren't just passive investors. They shape the protocol by voting on proposals that can expand Aave to new chains, add new assets, or tweak the core parameters that define how lending and borrowing works on the platform. This community-driven approach keeps the protocol resilient, responsive, and it's truly what DeFi is about. There's also people that say Aave is leading when it comes to decentralization too. Now, performance-wise, Aave often mirrors the broader DeFi market. When decentralized finance as a whole booms, like it did in 2020 and 2021, Aave tends to follow suit. At its peak in May of 2021, the token soared to around $667. As the protocol has introduced new features and expanded to more chains, the token has also adapted, now usable on multiple networks where Aave operates. And what's interesting, I guess, if you're into this stuff, Donald Trump is heavily buying Aave right now through his World Liberty Phi project, which essentially is supposed to just be a fork of Aave itself. Now, if you want to know if Aave is in our portfolio and what other cryptocurrencies we're holding, then check out learningcrypto.com where we also have a ton of information and guides to help you get up to speed with this fast changing market. All in all, the Aave token actually has a lot of utility to it. So it's a pretty good one to hold if you're interested in DeFi and lending. It's considered a blue chip by many, but do your own research as it's obviously still a high risk asset and you need to understand exactly what you're getting yourself into. But when you look at Aave's achievements, like having over $22 billion in the total value locked in the smart contracts and developing features like, again, flash loans, it's pretty clear this isn't just your average crypto project. It's actually a platform trying to build out the future in decentralized finance. Anyone from around the world can tap into Aave's liquidity pools, stake Aave tokens for rewards, and even help shape the protocol's future through governance votes. All of that without needing permission. It is a beautiful thing.